In today's video, I'm going to work on the JBC RC727 stereo cassette recorder again, and I'm going to be adjusting the bias frequency and the bias current. I have the service manual printed out, and I've got a pretty clear set of instructions. I'm supposed to connect a frequency counter across TP201 and TP301, and I'm supposed to set the beat cut switch to the lower position and adjust the oscillator coil L401 so that the counter indicates 69 kilohertz, 69,000 hertz and that this procedure is the bias frequency adjustment what I had just mentioned and of course we have to remember that the uh, bias is only used during recording and basically it's got nothing to do with the playback um, the bias frequency it's a um, supersonic frequency meaning a high frequency and that means basically you can't hear it and this bias frequency is basically mixed with the recording signal and by adjusting the coil that they just mentioned um, basically what we're going to do is change the tuning basically the tuned frequency and um, by turning it in or out, we'll be able to increase the frequency. I think turning it out increases the frequency and turning it in decreases the frequency. Now in this particular unit, um, they want the beat cut switch to be in a lower position um, because if we don't do that, we're going to have the wrong frequency because every time you put the beat cut switch in a different position the uh, bias oscillator frequency is going to change a little bit and so that's why it's got to be at least for this particular unit so you'd have to actually check your service manual for whatever particular make and model that you're working on and follow the basically instructions um, I don't think I've looked at this unit I don't think it has even uh, you can't even put the beat cut switch in the off position Basically, what what the B cut switch does that basically that eliminates uh, basically uh, beat tones that might occur when you record something, for example. And also, what I'm going to do is hook up my oscilloscope across the record head. Uh, excuse me, across the erase head because that always gets a pretty strong um, signal. The the bias oscillator. Uh, doesn't only send a signal to the record and record head, but also to the erase head, and that signal somewhat stronger. That way, I can monitor the signal and make sure I'm getting a nice and clean sine wave, which basically is what I want to look. Basically, what I want to have. And of course, I let the unit warm up for a couple minutes, and um, then I can go ahead and start. Also, we have to remember. In order for us to get a reading at all, we have to put the unit into record. So in order for us to get any kind of waveform at all, we have to put the unit into um, record mode. And of course I had to defeat the anti-record mechanism here. Um, once I did that, I was able to easily put the press down both the play and record buttons at the same time. So the unit is in record mode now but that's not enough because um, if we remember here there's also a record or rather the record playback switches are on the circuit board here I'm pointing at them now um, there are two long metal switches that are spring loaded and these have to be pushed in and normally when you press down on the play record switch with the mechanism in in place it's of course it's out of the unit now this here this arm here pivots over and pushes it in and then the unit is effectively in record mode now of course I've blocked or rather stopped the uh, springs from pushing this arm back because if I do because if I remove this toothbrush here old toothbrush which I use for cleaning electronics parts if I pull that out then it's going to go back into play mode not record mode which is not what I want so now here is the scope probe hooked up across the erase head um, 
again we only get this I'm only going to be able to see this signal if it's, the machine is in record so to take a look at the uh, actual waveform here's the actual waveform we want to see this is a nice and clean sine wave uh, we don't want to see uh, any kind of distortion or anything because that means our machine has got problems then. Now in order to measure the frequency I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, digital meter here but I can't use this meter to do the uh, bias current measurement because it doesn't have enough frequency response and not high enough. I can use it to check the uh, frequency but I can't uh, use it to check the voltage so it's going to give me inaccurate readings so let me go ahead and get the probes here I should be getting something okay it's 72 kilohertz and it's supposed to be 69 um, it's 3 kilohertz too high it's probably not really honestly on this machine it's probably not going to make a difference on this little L cheapo machine and you won't be able to hear any kind of a difference but let me go ahead and see if I can uh, adjust things and right here we can see L401 which uses one uh, coil here it's got to be adjusted and um, here's the two potentiometers for adjusting the bias current. Of course, one one is for each channel. There's two channels left and right, so we need two of these things. But of course, for the uh, frequency, since there's only one oscillator, we almost, we um, only have to do one adjustment. And also, if we were to say we decided to hook up the frequency counter across the test points, we would only have to do do it on one not on both okay I've got a screwdriver in there now I don't know if this volt the frequency here can be seen well it can be seen a little bit that's showing 73 kilohertz right there and let me go ahead and do some turning here So basically, um, turning in now um, decreases the frequency, and turning out, if you turn this out, basically turning out um, decreases the inductance, but increases the frequency. See, I'm already all the way up to 75 uh, kilohertz, so let me go ahead and turn this thing in. With the other hand, I'm holding the, the multimeter probes on the head, so I would actually need another hand or another arm. So it's down, basically down around to where it was, 72 kilohertz, and I got to think about whether I'm going to leave this like it is, probably, because um, just the effort would be just too great to swap out some capacitors here uh, for no gain whatsoever so that being said let me go ahead and do the um, bias uh, bias current adjustment of course I have to remember the uh, to mention that uh, with this particular unit they want you to put the um, tape switch in the normal position I was able to figure out. So that being said, we'll go off to the next part. So I'm putting the meter up now, the digital voltmeter, my fluke here. It can't measure 69 or 70 kilohertz. Um, that's an AC signal and my meter just can't do it so I'm going to use the meter up above which I know for sure can do it. Now back to my adjustments. Again this adjustment has to be done twice the bias current adjustment uh, once for the left channel once for the right channel and since it's so hard there's actually two test points here they're just little metal rods sticking out um, 
it's hard to get on there so I'm using this little these alligator clips and the alligator clips are going to be attached to the other end of the voltmeter and that's how I'm going to be doing the um, adjustments so okay I'm on there So let me go ahead and get a screwdriver for that, or I got one laying around here. I prefer to use, since this stuff is always pretty sensitive, uh, I prefer to use a non-metallic kind. And Because you're dealing with such low levels here, so let me go ahead and do one adjustment. And what does it say here? It says... We connect the VTVM across TP201 and TP203. Again, there's TP201 consists of two uh, test points, and in between here is a 10 ohm resistor. And that's how we figure out, using Ohm's law, that's how we figure out the bias current. Of course, we basically once we measure the voltage here, we know the resistance, and that's going to give us the current because I equals E over R. So, um, say we measured 4.5 millivolts, and we divided by, by R, that would give us 450 micro amperes. Um, anything else that I wanted to add here? I think I can go ahead and start doing the... Um, bias adjustment now. So basically all I do is to make this adjustment I just turn these potentiometers as R261, R361 and again I like to use non, uh, non-magnetic type of screwdrivers because a lot of times you use a, a metal screwdriver which is easier to turn but then the moment you remove the screwdriver uh, the reading is going to change what you're what you're going to be reading so now I'm having a problem seeing this from here from behind the camera I think I'm on now okay so so here's what we get we're on the 10 millivolt scale and it is around 3.8 millivolts this is 10 millivolts it's 5 millivolts there's 3.8 so we're a little bit too low so I'm going to go ahead and try to get that up somewhat and you can see here I'm holding this camera with my arm. Now I'm going to be turning to see what happens. And I want it like right about in the middle. Now I do the other channel. So I had to change the position of the test leads. Now they're on the other two um, test points. And of course in between the test points if we, looked, we would look down we would see a 10 ohm resistor right in between these uh, uh, two little test points. Now here's the other channel and I brought it up to about 4.5 millivolts very close so I'm gonna leave that alone and basically that concludes this video.